I get uh, several calls um, a year from uh, different departments with uh, Cleveland Clinic. These kind of people who get referred to me are folks who are more sensitive than anyone else. They are the, the hypersensitive people. There's some additional sampling that you have to do with folks like that because you have to leave no stone unturned because you never know what's really causing the problem. The, the main issue is that, you know, as consultants, we all use the same stuff. It's just our choice about whether or not we're going to use one thing or another. With hypersensitive folk, you know, you can bring out your carbon dioxide, carbon monoxide, and combustible gas, and, you know, sewer gas, and uh, all these other things. But I think one of the things that most consultants miss is that we've kind of, kind of gotten away from uh, sampling for viable uh, spores gives you a better picture uh, than non-viable. And the non-viable is just, you know, this little Oreo cookie and it's got an impact plate in it and you suck so much air through it and you get this debris field and then the laboratory can read it. With um, viable analysis, you're using a Petri dish and uh, you, you know, you, you put it in a device and it kind of drills 600 little holes of air. And it's a very short term test, but uh, then you put, send it off to a lab and they put it in an incubator kind of thing. And uh, after so many days, they pull it out and they read it. You're getting a different uh, set of data. I, I think the reason why I wanted to mention this is that consultants have gotten so used to using these impact plates. And when you're dealing with a sensitive person, you, you have to do more. Uh, so don't forget that.